So um, I'm Jonathan. Um, this session, I give the meta CXR journey and learnings. Um, I have 20 plus slides. So I'll try to go through as quickly as I can. And uh, if you have any questions, just ask any, any time. Um, I don't think I will be able to, we will be able to flush all the uh, questions uh, in this session. This is merely to uh, spark the conversation. And uh, actually tomorrow afternoon, there's an MC on CXL specifically. All right, so the work is not, a, uh, it's not possible without a village. So we have all those reviewers from different companies. Thanks for the work. Uh, so for the agenda, we will go through the CXL memory technology quickly because some of you may have not, I guess, may not have heard about CXL. And then I'll talk about the meta status and our plan. Um, then specifically goes down into the memory management and at scale device management. Then uh, finally, we have uh, discussions. Make it full screen. Yeah. So, this way? <laughs> oh, that way. Okay, okay, okay. I saw it. I saw it. Thank you very much. That's great collaboration. <laughs> I learned something. It's the first time I use BBB. Not, not bad. <laughs> okay, so. Um, if you go to this link, this is a public link, you can go, to, you can download the current spec is 3.0, um, like 1500 pages. Um, so <laughs> CXL, um, all the CXL devices, they are, um, CXL protocol are built on top of PCIe uh, protocol. All of them has to implement CXL.io, but depends on your usage. There are three different types, one type, the typical usage is like for NIC card, that uh, smart NIC, that it implements CXL.io. So you have cache coherency. You have cache inside the CXL card that it cache coherency with the system memory. Um, or you can have like a GPGPU or dense computation for AI that you implement both CXL.cache and CXL.memory. That means the device has memory that, uh, that the host can access not just the device. Uh, the memory buffers uh, implement just the CXL.main and the, the uh, usage could be uh, bandwidth and uh, capacity expansion um, and also a storage class memories. And, uh, and uh, those are just examples. So this is a diagram from the CXL spec. It shows you that in parallel to the PCIe protocol, it has defined the CXL.main uh, cache protocol and the CXL.main protocol for link layer, transaction layer, and there's arbitration and the max layer. Um, the current status. So CXL 1.01 was released, I believe it's 2019, and then 2.0 is 2020, 3.0 was released last week, uh, last month. And this PDF has is a white paper. So if you don't want to read 1500 page, read these three pages. Um, the processor, the so CXL root port. Right now we have 1.01 will be product launched soon, in a few months, I guess, I hope. And CXL 2.0 support right now is being worked out. The Silicon companies are working hard on it. And the CXL memory devices, the 2.0 support will be product launched soon. And this table shows the differences between those three protocols, how it involves. Um, so this is the basic, configuration, you can see that the processor has processor attached DIMMs and the CXL card has a CXL um, attached DIMMs. So now as a corner developer, you say, what do I see from the corner viewpoint, right? You run NUMA control, you see that this is a dual socket system. So you have two NUMA nodes, zero and one, both have CPU and memory, and you have a node two, which does not have CPU, but has memory. So it's a CPU less memory, NUMA node. So, what, what, why is the industry exciting about CXL? Because it actually decouples the compute and the memory. Now it's not tightly coupled. So that frees a lot of things, changes quite some consumptions uh, or assumptions, like it increases the bandwidth and the capacity. And uh, it gives you tiered 
memory hierarchy. If you look at the, the, the right button, this pyramid, you see that CXM memory actually fit in nicely a, uh, a void uh, area for the, for the latency. Um, it allows you to have media di diversities. Your, your CXM memory could be any type of memory. Um, so your processor attached memory and CXM memory could be different. And CXM memory, you can do anything you want. Uh, it provides flexible and fungible memory. So this gives you something uh, uh, very a hot term called, called software-defined memory now. You can do hot plug, you can have several hosts put in the same memory space, and you can share memory dynamically as well. So there are a number of published uh, use cases. So from Meta, from Microsoft, from Cast. So links are all there. So Meta's plan. So we finished the system level prototyping, including software and hardware. We met the latency and the power budget and uh, latency impact studied and we posted the uh, corner patches. Thanks for um, our corner team. And uh, we worked through multiple generations of system configuration, multiple generations of devices and processors. Um, and uh, we are working on the S scale management. So this is our initial target, right? We start from simple use cases where CXM memory is added as system memory. It's static configuration. And for the kernel OS, by collaborating with the CXM kernel and OS community, uh, we did the memory management part. And uh, we, together we are working on the device management part. So memory management, what's our goal? So CXL provides more bandwidth to you, but in the meantime, the latency is longer. So we want to minimize the performance impact to the workload despite the memory latency. But in the meantime, we don't want the corner to have to have to uh, know the prior knowledge of the application behavior. And we don't want to do in-depth application tuning. Uh, so, but the corner corner is not equipped to, the, to, to meet this goal. Uh, the paging mechanism is latency intensive. So paging from the hot memory to the warm memory. Uh, Numa balancing is not able to move the pages to the, to the CXL node, CPU less Numa node. And uh, uh, when there's a memory pressure, it behaves not so good. So, to really study the workload and also study the impact of our patch to understand our design, we developed the user space profiling tool that you don't need to change the corner. Uh, and this gives you some examples of our data that we have a web cache one, cache two warehouse um, workload, and uh, we find out uh, the access patterns. And uh, the, the, then we have this diagram shows up how we design this user space profiling tool, we will have it uh, posted upstream. Uh, the details are in our paper. Um, we developed a patch set on transparent page uh, placement. Uh, John is sitting there, actually is the author. Um, so our design is uh, we, we focus on the migration for the lightweight reclamation. Uh, we demote the code pages from the processor attached memory to the CXM memory and promote vice versa. Um, we decouple the allocation and reclamation and uh, we also added bits to, so, so that we can observe the behavior. Uh, the effectiveness is that you, we have two configurations. One configuration is all 96 gig of memory are attached to the processor. Another configuration is 64 gig attached to the processor and a 32 gig is a CXM memory. Uh, in this case, we can find that uh, with the TPP patch, the performance impact to the workload is less than 1%. So that's good enough for us in exchange for, for, uh, for, for, for other benefits. Now, those, so what I said about that patch set is for latency intensive workload. Now, what about bandwidth intensive workload? Right. What about the bandwidth is also at its bottleneck? 
if it is a processor attached to memory. So we have this interleave improvement that um, you can tune, uh, you can manually define what's your interleave um, ratio, right? So, so uh, if it is the default, the current corner uh, default is one to one ratio. In this case, we see 40% drop. But if we change the ratio to five to one, we get 8% increase in terms of performance. So CXM memory actually improves the workload because now you have data flow, not just goes through the memory controller on the processor, it also goes through the PCIe subsystem, going to the, go the course. Um, and we have an interesting finding is that the optimal ratio, it actually depends mostly on the hardware. The shape of the latency and the bandwidth curves. It does not have too much correlations with the workload itself, as long as the workload is uh, band bandwidth intensive. That's our observation. So any questions so far? Um, now we go to the F scale management. So now it lo all looks good if you work on a rack or single system, but what happens if you have a lot of things, a data center full of CXL device, how do you manage it? Um, so to, for the memory to work, um, as long as the firmware works, right? Um, it will just work automatically. So CXL memory is either added as system memory when the Linux boots up, start to boot up, or you can access it through spatial devices, device, devices such as DAX device, direct access device. You can do it either way. Um, however, now the CXL device is actually a PCIe device. The memory is not managed by the core directly. So we need a CXL driver. The CXL driver is, can communicate with the device through mailbox. Mailbox is defined in the spec. And the driver can discover the, and enumerate the hierarchy. It can find out oh, how many CXL root port I have down there, how many switches are there, each switch, how many devices are there. So find all the hierarchies. And the CXL driver is also designed to a number of other things, like firmware upgrade, like event management, because CXL devices generate events, like hardware error event. Oh, I have a warning, I'm too hot, things like that. Uh, now, there's a complication here, is that you have host, you have device. Host and device could support different CXL versions. So a clean case, you have a 2.0 host and 2.0 device. Now, as I said, we will have 1.1 host in the market soon. But all the device vendors actually will roll out devices, this is 2.0. Now 2.0, you have two modes. One is called RCRB mode, another is called non-RCRB mode. So the CXL driver needs to support both of them so that the production system could be supported by the CXL driver. So uh, that's something the kernel community is working on right now. For example, you can see that the registry, register mappings are different and also uh, yeah, the register mappings are different, and then RCRB is not exposed to the corner at this moment. It's not config space access regular. Um, now, talk about event management. So the CXL device could speed out different types of events. Could it be CXL memory error events, that's green, and you could have the red one, the other spec defined events, like say, oh, I need, I need, um, 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 I, uh, I generated some performance uh, data you can grab, or device vendor specific events. And uh, uh, this is a design that's currently on the paper. There's no code for it. So I hope to work with the industry to really get this done together and uh, refined. And then it goes through the corner, you have the CXL driver does pull in, does interrupt, does uh, uh, command handling and does the event handling framework. And then the data flows to the trace buffer, then all the agent, including the user space, could register for it and get new events. And once with the new events, it needs to go through the dispatcher, go some of the data, the green data, the Rust data goes to the Rust daemon, so that 
from user's viewpoint, all the dim errors, right? Uh, processor dim error or the CX dim error, they all go through Rust dim, show up there nicely. You just say, oh, this memory attached to this processor uh, memory controller had an error. That uh, memory is a CX memory, is represented by this PCIe BDF, right? Bus device function had an error. So, and then flows to the device vendor specific event handler. So we are thinking this design so that device vendor could add their extensions and the customer like us, like Meta, we could have our own handlers to suit for our formats and policy needs. So this is on the paper. I we hope to work with the industry to get, get it uh, improved. Uh, another complication bring forth by CXL is a reset. So PCIe, we all know that for PCIe device, there is hot reset, warm reset, and cold reset. So that's cool. That's almost the same for CXL. Now, there is added something called a CXL reset. So CXL reset means when resets, it resets the entire CXL dot, um, dot IO and the CXL dot main protocol uh, for all layers. Uh, now, now the complication is right, for the entire device. Now the complication is you might have multiple hosts sharing a device. This does not exist today, but it exists on the paper. And uh, um, some the, the the device vendors and silicon vendors will will get it, make it happen. Now it's up to corner community to to deal with it. Um, uh, HDM region. So HDM is a term you might not be um, be uh, be familiar with. This is a CX spec defined term. It's called host host managed device memory. So in the device, you could have some memory just managed by the by the by the device, like today's GPU device, for example. And you could have some of the memory is actually CX memory that host can access issue load store command directly to access them. So that region might migrate from one host to another host, right? So when you do reset, you need to consider this. And that's from the um, from device viewpoint. Now from the host side, the host, you have a piece of memory region. The piece of memory region now points to one CXL device, next time may point it to another CXL device. So, those are the things that needs to be considered. Now, the reset management, the CXL driver flow uh, to support the reset. Before the reset, you need to offline the HDM ranges um, and, uh, um, and make sure the host stop initiating any new requests and clear randomize the content from the security viewpoint. Because if you don't be careful, your memory now is exposed to another host or to another application. Um, then you issue the CXL, you tell the device to, to do a CXL reset. And after that, reinitialize all the CXL functions and reinitialize the HDM ranges. Switching to another topic is that today, how do you know as a customer, as a user, how do you know the information about the processor attached memory? You run DMI decode. Um, now, the problem with the current DM medical is that it only shows you the processor attached memory data. Today, if you, you connect a CXL device, you don't see the, 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 the memory from the, CXL mem uh, from the CXL device. So if your firmware supports it, then it would work, right? So, so get it to work or add it. Uh, we basically have CXL, uh, have host firmware in Linux. Uh, by the way, um, now DMI decode is filled in by the firmware, right? So that's a static information. But going forward, actually the hot memory plug becomes common, especially with CXM memory, because now it's just a PCIe card. And also you can switch between different hosts with a CXL uh, switch. Then you actually don't need to do anything physical to plug and unplug memory. Um, and the DMI decode only shows the system memory, does not show memories accessible through devices. Here, devices means Linux devices. This is DAX devices. Uh, so 
the proposal. What about something like LS map? It's similar to LS PCI, but it's actually more complicated than LS PCI. I'm not going through LS PCI today because there are patches posted for LS PCI because LS PCI today only understands PCIe language, does not understand the CXL dialect. So there's a set for that already. Now, the, the memory side, if we focus on the memory side, how to show the current data? How to show the memory media information? How to show the interleave information? You could interleave between the CXL devices or interleave between CXL and the processor memories. That's all possible. And the memory segment information, what memory segment right now is provided by system memory? What are uh, represented accessible through the corner memory devices? And uh, what's the CXL hierarchies, right? With today's CXL memory, uh, CXL driver, uh, you know, kudos to the CXL driver uh, community. Um, in the CCFS, the hierarchy is there. We just need to show to the user nicely. Okay. Pretty quick, 20 minutes. Uh, so call to action. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of going, things going on. If you go to the Linux dash CXL um, mailing list, you see uh, all the work about the at scale management. Now, if you uh, memory, uh, existing memory uh, mailing list, memory management, they have a lot of discussions. Ye yesterday, there was a, a session, BOF session from, from Google. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so and also join the CXL forum. And uh, uh, there's a software, system software work group and a memory system uh, work group. Tomorrow, 3 to 6.30 in Herbert over there, uh, our uh, Samsung friends and the Intel friends will lead the CXL uh, micro conference. Yeah, it's. It's only three and a half hours, but next year it could be like eight hours. <laughs> Get it, grab your coffee. Uh, how, so, so yeah, corner memory. So here are some, so even though our past set meets our corner needs, right? But uh, we think that in longer term, something needs to be done. Um, especially uh, from, like, from the tuning, point of view. So for interleaving, right? I said that we have to run some experiments to find the best interleave ratio. So how to consume the interleave ratio with less tuning effort. Um, second, the uh, latency sensitive workload and the bandwidth sensitive workload. Right now, we improve their performance uh, by different method. Now, they are exclusive technologies. On one device, you might have both workloads running. What do you do? For us, today is not a problem, but for the industry, right? Um, tiered memory hierarchy. This uh, corner team, corner community has been discussing this for some years. Um, the, we need, we need some solutions. I think it, it will get more and more complicated. In our case, we have only two uh, uh, configurations. One is a processor attached to memory, and one is um, CXL memory. In the future, you have a lot more. You could have a lot more. Uh, like with switches, you add the latencies, some latencies, right? And you could have different uh, memory, CXL memory media that have different uh, CXL, uh, I have different memory latency uh, characteristics. So, and the today's memory hierarchy, memory management does not really consider the actual latency and bandwidth. It does not really consider that. It's not smart enough. Um, hot plug, yeah. That hot plug will be the foundation for the software defined memory. So today we have nothing for that. Hot plug, you need to configure the, you need to consider the traffic management, device management, memory management, security. It's a lot of things needs to be figured out. Memory sharing. Once you have memory sharing, 
how to ma maximize its impact. Now you don't need to move data from one host to another host. How to use that? It looks very appealing, but how to use that? How to benchmark it? Um, any question from the audience? Hey, um, I just have a question. What are, I guess, the limitations of you have the switches, like the distances that you can have um, this um, CXL shared memory between two hosts? Like, um, if you can talk about that. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure I heard uh, clearly about your question. Uh, what are the limitations of distance, you know, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so if we go back here, This. This is a this is a theoretical um, data. Looks very nice on the paper, right? On the actual system, we did we did achieve this, but it's a direct connection from the host to the device, right? Now, if you add switch in between, switch will add latency. How much? We don't know, right? Switch will add latency, and uh, um, and uh, um, so this number one hundred seventy to two hundred fifty ninety seconds is about the same as is if you are accessing the um, the memory across the processor. So processor one's core, processor zero's core access processor one's memory, about the same. We've got uh, Conan Petito raising his hands on the, on the chat. Yeah. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, we can talk more. What was the question? Yeah. Uh, Conan, go ahead. I am not able to see it. Yeah, he, uh, uh, you, maybe you just go ahead and type your question in there. I'll catch it when it shows up in the chat. So let's continue. Sorry, I didn't hear. Can you this repeat? Uh, someone raised their hand in the chat, but oh. um, we're not able to hear them okay. talk. Okay. So I'll, I'll just wait till they. Yeah, yeah, we need to wait a bit until he uh, taps in. Um, any other questions on the memory? Okay. Here. Sorry, uh, me again. Um, so let's say that you were running virtualized loads. Um, the expected level of steel is pretty much, um, you're anticipating the expected level of steel um, on like um, virtual VMs to be about the same as if this was just a regular NUMA node with you know, a CPU and memory attached. Is yeah, it should be the same. Uh, uh, if I understand your question correctly, it is the same because now it's just a piece of memory that anybody, uh, including VMs, can access it freely. Um, you, and uh, you just need to be able, you just need to keep in mind that um, now, in terms of zeroing the memory, you switch from VM to another VM. In terms of zeroing, you need to be more careful. Yeah. The, the, the processor maps, the processor attached memory map host, host firmware already set it up, but now device is different. You may just have to tell the device to zero the memory or randomize it. Yeah. My question is similar to him. Uh, so from a user space perspective, you just load and store into a memory position and it goes to CXL memory? Yeah. Or do you need to have like a page fault to access CXL? So for instance, there is a TLB entry for the CXL memory, so you can convert from virtual to physical. Is this similar to a regular memory or is it a different path? It's the same path. So if, if, if the host firmware is configured to add the CXL memory as system memory, you just use access it, load and store. It's no difference at all, no difference at all. If it is added as DAX device memory, then you need to bind it to it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so that if you are six or memory aware application, you can do that way.
Any other question? Sorry, me again. Um, the actual memory on the back end, um, is that, um, is there any way to, it, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, um, is the memory in any way virtualized? So for example, you had a failure and you could replace in runtime your backend memory and you know whatever P2Vs would just be remapped. Is Today it doesn't. Today it is not. So um, this is a this is a, a stability um, a problem that needs to be managed very well. Is that today you know that if system memory has uncorrectable error, and it happened in the kernel critical region, then the kernel simply cannot run. If it is not critical region, you can do a lot of things just to quarantine it. Now, CXO memory is as it's in the same category as system memory now. So, so today, if some error happened on PCIe device, so what? Linux kernel is still happy, even though the app is not happy, VM is not happy, but the kernel is happy. This is that. This with CXL device, if there's a device error or CXL memory error, it impacts the kernel, has the potential. So the, uh, the stability or it's becomes very important. The device uh, vendor needs to do a good job. Yeah, and a, a follow up question. Um, the, uh, the backing devices, um, are they uh, dynamic, the dy dynamic add at runtime or is this something that has to be you know, after post? Um. <coughs> it is dynamic in terms of how you map the memories. You can change it at the runtime. However, you cannot um, dynamically provision a device. You cannot say, you, say, let's say two hosts connect to a switch to the same device. Um, you have to shut, at this moment, you have to shut down both server and then you do the switch through the firmware. Mm, Kernel is not able to do that today. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was the last one. Yeah, good questions. Hope in a few years the answer is different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You you have a question? Oh, uh, online. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit of a follow up for that. Would you envision it becoming sort of that where you would not want the kernel? to run with the CXL device and just have these CXL devices used for like user space allocations and you would keep the kernel in DRAM? You could configure the kernel in a way that critical regions just go through the, um, just go through the processor attached memory. You could do that, yeah. Now the impact to the application, right, is still there for the VMs, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, if not, we go to the last page. Oh, too fast. Performance tuning tools. Could some of the memory performance tuning be done in user space? How to change the latency and the bandwidth profile um, of uh, CXM memory regions to simulate memory hierarchy? This is basically about how to make the kernel developer's job easier. You don't want to have the, yeah, I mean, we have, Meta has the luxury of having the devices. We have racks and racks of CXL devices we can work with. But uh, memory management developers, how do they simulate that? How to change the behavior of the benchmark, benchmarking apps, such as the page type ratio, memory access pattern? to simulate workloads, right? So those are all about the tools of helping memory management work, of simulating the device characteristics, the system device characteristics, and uh, workload characteristics, how to do that. So we don't have an answer. Some of you are smarter and we have answers. We look forward to that. Any questions on this? Actually, there's the last page. Or any other questions on any other aspects regarding CXL? 
Okay. Um, Pankaj Gupta asks, um, does CXL DAX device backend, uh, is, is, is it different from the traditional NVDM uh, device DAX backend? So the question is about NVD. So let me try it again. Um, is the CXL DAX device backend different than the traditional NVDM? Oh, I see, I see. So the question is, is the CXL DAX device backend the same as the backend for NVDM? It is not exactly the same, but they, 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 uh, uh, they are built upon the NVDM device driver. So uh, it's instead of uh, it's a payment device, right now it's called h -man device. I forgot the term. So if you go to the driver, uh, Linux kernel code, you see driver payment, and then you have a payment directory and have a h -man directory. So they share some infra infrastructure, but a different device driver. Yeah. So the DAX device, but you can use DAX control command, right? to change the CXL memory from system memory uh, to back to the DAX controller memory or vice versa. Yeah, that's all working today. Um, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.